It is an emotional day in Nigeria as foremost nationalists recount the lives and times of late Chief MKO Abiola as Nigeria marks Democracy Day. Plus TV Africa, Mary Chinda brings us this report. June 12, 2020, a day that marks one of the fiercest struggles of the Nigerian state towards democracy. Right behind me is the statue of a man who is described as the hero of the June 12, 1993 struggle, Chief MKO Abiola. Mashut Kashimawo Olawale Abiola, MKO, was young and passionate about democracy. It is 27 years after the election was annulled by the then military government headed by General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, IBB. It is 27 years after the unofficial result of the election, though not declared by the National Electoral Commission, NEC, indicated a victory for MKO of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, who defeated Bashar Tofa of the National Republican Convention, NRC. And it is 22 years after MKO was allegedly killed while in custody. Today, it is not only a Biola day in Nigeria, but today, over 180 million Nigerians mark Democracy Day nationally, thanks to the President Muhammad Buhari passed a bill to legalize June 12 as Democracy Day. While it is an emotional day for Nigeria as a nation, for scores of first-generation nationalists who have been on the forefront of national development, the annulment of the June 12 election was a step that further plunged the country into rot. MKO Abiola died for a collective struggle. It's a collective responsibility that will continue to keep his memory alive and ensure that the ideas of June 12 lives. My biggest regret is that we fought for a restoration to full-blown democracy. Because we were uh, of the strong opinion that those who will take over governance after the exit of the military will be mindful of the economic deprivation of our people. But what would have been different if the June 12 election was not an old? It was, it, was, it was a very peaceful election. I was there, so it wasn't... I worked for INEC as ad hoc staff for that election. It was a very peaceful election. I judged, you know, to be very peaceful. It, we were very sad when the election was cancelled. Um, if, uh, if June 12... allowed to stay, would Nigeria uh, have been better? Uh, perhaps yes, because... And my only reason would be that we wouldn't have had a lot more protracted uh, military rule because the military rule has, uh, has had serious implication on us as Nigerians. Almost three decades after, how has Nigeria fared post June 12, 1993? 27 years after, looking back, MQ will not be too happy with all that is happening in this country. And how does the Abiola family feel about June 12th? My father was Nigerian through and through. So I've had a question asked of me once where they asked me if I was upset about what my father did or I would have rather him stay at home. No, I'm very proud of my father. I believe he stood for what he believed in. I believe he was in the right when he made those decisions. And I believe that if 1993 June 12 was allowed to go on, Nigeria would be a better place today. But notwithstanding, I'm still very optimistic about the country's future. You know, who would have ever thought that 25 years later we will be celebrating Democracy Day on June 12. MK Abiola died for all of us. So it's a collective responsibility in ensuring that we make Nigeria work in our lifetime. And that is why leaders must know that they are servants. They are there to serve and that whatever it is, people paid the price. So therefore, their death must never be in vain. As the world joins Nigeria to celebrate June 12th as Democracy Day, 
the emphasis is laid on better leadership, especially as the nation has remained the poverty capital of the world since 2019. From Lagos, Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa. We're now joined by legal practitioner Phyllis Moka. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. What are some of the significant lessons from that election that produced MK or Abiola? Well, June 12 is significant in so many. Um, for one, it's perhaps the boldest effort uh, made by Nigerians to actually define and direct their own democratic experience, to set that tone for uh, you know, our own democracy, the way we understood it and the way we thought uh, it was best for us. So it was an election that came after a prolonged period of very radical and determined engagement uh, by the pro-democracy movement, of which I was um, a key actor. Um, now, it, it wasn't a benign decision by the military to actually, you know, uh, seat power. It was it was won by the struggle of Nigerians who decided that they had had enough of military rule. So June 12 was a, a watershed in so many ways for for our country, you know, in our quest for you know our democracy. Well, but you know, unfortunately, that election was cancelled. But nonetheless, in 1999, we finally made the transition, which we would have made in 1993. Now, looking back, I think that we have come you know, quite some distance from 1999. Certainly, we've come some distance from the you know, era of military rule. But you know, has it been what we, what we thought? No, it hasn't. Has it been what we had wished for? It wasn't. It hasn't been. Has it been what we had hoped for? It wasn't. June 12 portended that whole idea that we're going to have a system of government that was you know, truly owned by the people of the country, by the citizens of this country, uh, where government will serve the, you know, the common good, the interests of the average you know, people. That was, that was the hope for many of us who were in the streets who struggled for um, that transition. It was our hope because we had decided that a military rule, because it was not of the people, was not good for the people. Okay. But you know what we've been pitched handed is is actually quite completely different from what we what you expected. Okay, I, I want to ask you this question. It's been years since that um, election, and we've been having series of elections since then. They seem to continue to fall below uh, the mark. What are key considerations we can take away from that election and apply in the current elections, especially now that election, the staggered elections are beginning, so that we can inch a little closer to getting, you know, fair election, credible elections in this country? Now, th that election was fought and won by uh, M. Abiola purely on the basis of, you know, what he offered, on the basis of the promise of democratic rule. So Nigerians went to that election to cast their vote. And it was a choice between the civilian you know, uh, democracy and the military dictatorship. And Nigerians voted loud and clear for you know, civilian uh, you know, democracy. Now, unfortunately, in all of the elections we've had since 1999, increasingly, the decisions have not really been about you know, consolidating our democracy. It's been more for so many other considerations. Many people in this country go to the polls to elect people purely on the basis of you know, who they are or where they come from, on the basis of what God they worship, on the basis of what money or what sort of value they get for the votes they cast. So you know, our electoral process has become so completely you know, modeled up in all kinds of you know, base interests that has nothing to do with really building and promoting, you know, good governance, uh, as it should be. You know, I'm hoping that the a key lesson to draw from, you know, uh, the June 12 experience is the realization that elections are not about the individuals necessarily who run for elections. 
Elections are an opportunity for citizens to exercise their you know, sovereign right to choose those who lead and those who govern. Okay. It is about the people. It's not about the, the people who actually run or the parties for that matter. It, it ought to be about the people. So meaning that we need to take elections more seriously. We need to participate more vigorously and be, you know, uh, and rise above some of those uh, base elements that, that often hold us down. Let's talk about the issue of restructuring. Um, some nationalists and activists are calling uh, for the demanding some actually for restructuring of this country. Um, on what side of the divide are you? Should we be looking at restructuring or should we be looking at other options? No, I'm on the side of you know, um, having a robust conversation about those very critical national questions. I mean, every country is entitled uh, to think and rethink you know, the way that it's constituted and the way that it operates. Um, in a way that gives vent to its aspirations uh, to actually thrive, uh, both you know, politically, uh, socially, and economically. Uh, we haven't had the best of you know, any of those. Um, socially, we're still completely you know, uh, you know, in the doldrums. Uh, economically, our people are, like you said, we're about the you know, poverty capital of the world. So when you look at it, I think that, yes, I think that there's a real need to take a very critical view of the way this country is organized, the model of you know, our you know, um, you know, federal system, uh, in order to give you know, some significant autonomy to the constituent parts of this country. Now, the national government hasn't served Nigeria well. The federal you know, government, throughout our history, has not served this country the way we deserve to be served. Not to say that if we change the system and give you know, greater autonomy to the regions or the, to the states, or even the local governments, things are necessarily going to change. I hold the view that what we need, you know, even more than restructuring, is a system of, you know, I mean, accountability that is driven by citizen consciousness. Look, the only thing that is worse than bad leadership that we have in this country is very docile, ineffective citizenship. Nigerians are like a people who are absent from home, from their home. Um, you know, they outsource their sovereignty to those who govern and never really stand up to hold those who govern accountable. So, so I think that you know, restructuring the country for citizens to be, be a lot more yes. engaged in the process of those electing those who bring them to power. Oh, absolutely. They must be not just engaged, you know, during the elections, but you know, in terms of using every democratic opportunity, whether it's the you know legislative process or the media or through citizen action, uh, to challenge you know uh, you know uh, executive lawlessness, challenge legislative, you know, uh, importance, like we have right now, where right, many yeah. I'm of afraid our, that's you know, the most time will let us take on the news. I want to thank you very much for your input and your insight on the issue of our democracy. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.